Okay, preheating's done. So let's see if we have to do anything to load this. I screwed up here. I uh, didn't get that lined up on the gear all the way, so it uh, I had to force it in. Get a print started. USB device. Da, 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 da. Let's see. What's in there? Nothing's in there. So it's test model. That's okay. Seems. Can you touch anything? Can't touch anything. We don't know what it is. Seems like maybe in the future you can see a 3D model. I don't know. Let's go to build. All right. Let's see it. Pretty good first layer. This is printing on a raft. You'll see at the end when I show you the finished product. Okay, so let's take a look at the first print, the very first print. This is the test G code that comes on the printer. Um, it, this looks pretty good. Um, I only found a little two minor issues. The little peak of this triangle uh, pyramid here a little messed up and then probably could have printed this center portion of this arch um, with some uh, support so let's see if you get in there and look so otherwise I mean otherwise this print looks pretty good um, that's that's some really good quality of course, it was printed on a raft, so you're going to have a bottom that looks like that, like it was printed on a raft. Um, you probably change the raft settings a little bit. Second item that was printed is uh, was a Benchy. The Benchy looks really good. You can see the letters on the bottom. You can see the writing, but can't read it. On the back, uh, the only the only issues I found with this print was there's from about right here to right here all the way around looks like a little bit of under extrusion, but uh, that's that's it. Otherwise, I mean everything on this print looks good. It just looks fantastic. Okay, now let's look at something I designed and printed. Uh, this is just a hook that I made uh, for use in my garage. I printed it, um, let's see. Yeah, I printed it laying on, it was laying on this side. So you can see the texture from the bed. Um, there's the top, the top layer. Looks pretty good. Um, yeah. So, I've been printing a couple days now with this printer, and overall, the quality on the printer is really good. I, uh, I like it. I heard that there was a new version of firmware out, so I'm going to walk you through the up automatic update. Well, not automatic, but the updating. So, we turn the uh, printer on. Okay. Now we can just wait. Okay, the notification pops up. A new version is found. Update firmware. Hit yes. All right. Please, so it's missing the PL from Ease. Upgrade completed. Ease, restart the machine. 
Well, they didn't fix that in the latest firmware, so... Okay, come on. Or whatever. So the screen is frozen, you can't go back or anything, so just turn it off. Okay, and then we turn it back on again. All right, it's another day when I'm recording this video. Um, I want to show you the uh, menu system. Um, so we'll just start off with build. Um, this is the internal disk. So when you send files from Voxel Maker to the printer, it comes to here. Um, and of course, you do get the uh, a picture of what the file is, and it shows you how long it's supposed to take the speed you're going to print the layer height and how much filament you're going to use um so um yeah so that's the internal disc and then when you have the thumb drive plugged in go to the usb device and you know same thing except it's just stored on the usb device instead of on the internal storage okay Let's look at the control menu. So for movement, you have to hold your finger down on the screen. There's, as you can see, there's no settings or anything to say, hey, I wanna move it 100 millimeters. What it actually does is, okay, I'm gonna, so look at where the nozzle is right now. Okay, let me step back. I'm gonna hold, I'm gonna raise the Z and just hold it down. Okay, it basically raises it 25 millimeters. You see? So it automatically stops at 25. It won't go past moving at 25. See, I'm still holding down and it's not moving. Well, that's because it's raised it 25 millimeters. Um, so you can tap and it'll move it not very far, okay? I mean, you can, you can see the little increments it's moving in. So, you, I mean, you can tap and it'll move, you see? So let's look at the Y. So, so let's move the Y all the way to the front, okay? The Y is all the way to the front. Okay, now I'm gonna hold down the Y to move it to the back. Okay, see it stopped right there. So would we start off at 65 to minus 96? Okay, and you can see the bed can still go back more. So, um, so the Y and the Z, you can't do the full range of, of movement. So let's look at the X. Let's see what the X does. Okay, so I'm gonna press down on the X and hold it. See, it didn't go all the way. So it goes about 160 millimeters. Okay, and you can hold it down and go the rest of the way. Whoa, oh man. Okay, I need to fix that. Huh. There's nothing some zip ties won't fix. I'll put some, oh, you know what, maybe that's why. Maybe that's why it came with these zip ties. Anyways, I'll fix that. So that's, that's the movements on the, on here, on the move screen. So the motor, right now the motor is, the stepper motor is disabled. This enables the stepper motor you can disable it okay now homing there's where I think needs some significant improvement you press homing there is no other homing options you cannot home the act any axis individually it's all or nothing okay so you can see it's homing and of course it takes forever
okay another thing is you can't get out of it when you're in the homing screen so let me let me just move this up again let me show you something with the homing screen okay so when you're in the homing screen and it's homing you can't get out of the screen you you just can't you're stuck so you got to sit there and wait now you can get out okay so the load and unload it, it preheats it and and it runs it for one to two minutes and it basically runs it until you press the OK button um, I've already showed you that the preheat I don't like the preheat because once you get out of the preheat menu even once you reach up reach temperature you're stuck so let's just sit here and get this okay so we're up to temperature now okay now let me now let's say you want to okay you, you preheated what are you gonna do well let's go back out of the preheat menu it just zeroed out the temperature so what is the point of the preheat menu if you can't go to any other menu option on here I don't know but you know I guess it's it could be it's to be used for manual loading and unloading if you want but as you can see the temperature is going back down so I think that's that's a just a minor issue um, <clears throat> there's not a whole lot of menu options in the settings you know you can adjust your preheat settings okay you can change everything for ABS and PLA your Wi-Fi I'm not gonna touch that because then it'll search for Wi-Fi and ask me to put in a password and I'm already connected um, language you can go in here and choose your language transmission ratio this is where you change your all your E steps you can just change them in here hit save and you're done which is nice um, and then these are your additional functions resume print filament detect and the light so the light is one of the nozzles so let me turn it off no light turn it on there's the light so not really needed but if you're filming time lapses I guess it'll be helpful um, a buzzer you can hit factory reset Okay, I'm not gonna take you into the info screen because it's got all it's got the serial number and shows the uh, my IP address, MAC address, all that stuff. Um, go into upgrade. It'll check you're on the latest version and you're good to go. So then there you have the leveling menu where you level. That's where you you raise or lower the bed so that it's touching the nozzle. And then you have Z calibration, which we already went through. We don't need that. So there were a couple things I had to do um, to the printer when when I put it together. Um, these screws here holding the uh, the nuts on. One of them was like sticking halfway out, um, but I basically had to tighten these two screws right here, and then the two screws over here on this side. That one right right there and that one right there so um, I had to tighten those those were loose I adjusted the eccentric nut on this wheel um, that wheel and on I didn't really have to do it on the nozzle but I just checked it anyways